Anyone inside or outside Mexico knows that getting involved with the Mexican cartel is like signing a death warrant, and we have seen many gruesome videos of how they show no mercy to anyone who stands in their way. However, a particular video surfaced, showing the decapitation and mutilation of a father and son at the hands of bloodthirsty gangsters, revealing the deeply ingrained cruelty, evil, and violence within the cartel. In this video, we will explore the fate of this father and son in Guerrero and why it's actually an important story that exposes several truths about the Mexican criminal underworld. No mercy in Mexico. In the summer of 2018, a disturbing video surfaced on the internet, revealing a deeply horrifying and unsettling scene that was allegedly filmed in the hills of a municipality in La Union, near the border of Costa Grande and Tierra Caliente. This video documents the torture and murder of a mother and son by the members of a Mexican cartel group. This video is also known as No Mercy in Mexico, as this father and son faced an unimaginable fate at the hands of their captors. The footage is divided into three parts, each about three minutes long, showing different stages of their terrifying ordeal. At the beginning of the video, both men were sitting on the ground, their hands tied tightly and their mouths gagged. Their captors began questioning them, and then one of the captors began to beat the older man with what appeared to be a large wooden stick. The violence inflicted on him was beyond comprehension. Tragically, things took an even darker turn when the father was beheaded in front of his son, using a small knife that resembled a pen. The most heartbreaking moment in the video was the son's reaction to witnessing his father's horrific death. He broke down in tears and cried behind the cloth that was wrapped around his mouth, and his agony deeply pierced the hearts of anyone who heard him. What is a little bit shocking is the fact that the father did not resist or struggle with his captors while he was being beheaded. It looked as if he had resigned himself to his fate, possibly due to the trauma from earlier beatings or being paralyzed by the brutality of the situation. After the father got beheaded, the son was put through a prolonged and excruciating ordeal far worse than what his father went through. Instead of beheading him once like they did with his father, his captors cruelly flayed his chest using knives. Throughout this painful and gruesome act, the son remained conscious, drifting in and out of shock. The pain and suffering he underwent are beyond comprehension as his captors stabbed the knives repeatedly into his skin and flesh, hacking flesh away from his torso to his abdomen areas and exposing his internal organs to the camera. Throughout this gruesome ordeal, he would sometimes appear lifeless and sometimes react to the inhumane acts of his captors. Despite the immense agony, the young man attempts to shield his chest and abdomen by crossing his arms, but to no avail. The captors hacked and hacked till they finally cut through all the flesh in his chest and torso so area till all the internal organs in that area were full. One could see his lungs inflating and deflating. Then these captors got a knife and cut his heart out of his body and it appeared to keep beating as they displayed it to the camera. They completed their depraving act by slashing the heart into the lifeless torso of the son. The third part of the video showed the aftermath of the flaying, revealing the lifeless bodies of the father and son, both mutilated and decapitated. Their captors proudly display their severed heads and hold them up like trophies, showcasing the depths of their depravity. They also claimed that they will send the severed heads of the father and son to the boy's mother and finish her off too. According to different sources on the internet, the captors behind the Guerrero flaying video are members of the Los Viagras cartel. This video was posted on the internet to serve as a warning to their enemies. Los Viagras gained notoriety for their extreme brutality and cruelty towards rivals and anyone who opposed them. They have committed heinous acts, including massacres, kidnappings, extortion, and extreme torture, demonstrating their viciousness. The Los Viagra are based in Michoacan, Mexico, and and they emerged in December 2014 when the Sierra Santana brothers, once part of the Grupos de Autodefensa Comunitaria, a self-defense force fighting the Knights Templar cartel in Michoacan's Tierra Caliente region, decided to establish their group. The name Los Viagras originated from a joke involving one of the younger brothers, his excessive use of hair gel, and his spiky hairstyle. Their criminal activities gained momentum when they attempted to disarm and dismantle the self-defense groups in December 2014, eventually taking over the municipal president's of Apatzingan. However, on January 6, 2015, they encountered strong resistance from the federal police, leading to 10 civilian deaths and 21 wounded. Over time, Los Viagras became increasingly involved in the drug trade, particularly in methamphetamine production and transportation. This expansion led to clashes with the powerful Jalisco New Generation Cartel, or CJNG, known as the most powerful and ruthless cartel in Mexico. By forming alliances with other criminal factions like the Cartel Independiente de Acapulco and the Beltran Leva Cartel, they extended their 
influence to other states such as Guerrero, Jalisco, and the state of Mexico. The dangerous criminal group is said to be led by the infamous Sierra Santana brothers, Nicolas Sierra Santana, also known as El Gordo, and Rodolfo Sierra Santana, along with their brothers, including the now deceased Jose Carlos, known as La Sopa, and Gabino. Los Viagras are engaged in a fierce territorial conflict with CJNG over control of Michoacan and other areas in Tierra Caliente and the state of Mexico. Despite the challenges posed by CJNG, Los Viagras have managed to hold their ground, making them one of Mexico's most formidable and hazardous criminal organizations. Five years later, Guerrero Flaying's video is still shrouded in mystery and speculation. The identities of the victims and perpetrators involved in this gruesome crime are still unknown, and no official investigations or legal actions have been taken to address this heinous act. Surprisingly, the Mexican authorities have remained silent on the matter, which has further made people antsy about the whole situation. Although this video is not easily accessible on the internet, a few determined people have taken it upon themselves to dig deeper and attempt to uncover its secrets. Several theories and rumors are circulating about the victims and perpetrators involved, none of which have been confirmed or verified. Guerrero Unidos one of the theories is that the father and son in the video were part of the Guerrero Unidos. In the southern region of Mexico, particularly in Guerrero, there exists a powerful criminal organization known as Guerrero Unidos. This group is involved in drug trafficking, corruption, extortion, kidnapping, and brutal murders. One of the most well-known incidents involving them was the disappearance of 43 students from Ayotzinapa College in Iguala, Guerrero in 2014. Roots of Guerrero Unidos can be traced back to 2010, when two factions from La Familia Michoacana joined forces with various cartels, forming this menacing alliance. It emerged as the remnants of the once powerful Beltran Leva organization decided to unite after facing significant setbacks. The Beltran Leva organization lost power after the death of its leader, Arturo Beltran Leva, in 2009 and the arrest of his trusted and loyal confidant, Edgar Valdez Villarreal, also known as Labarbi, in 2010. Some Beltran Leva organization factions sought alliances with other cartels like the Juarez Cartel, Los Zetas, and the Tijuana Cartel while others formed new groups like the CIDA and La Baradora. Out of this situation, Guerrero Unidos was born. Taking advantage of the weakened Beltran Leva organization and the lack of effective local authorities, Guerrero Unidos gained control of several municipalities in Guerrero, with Iguala being a major stronghold. The group managed to infiltrate positions of power, forming connections with influential figures like Mayor Jose Luis Abarca and his wife, Maria de Los Angeles, who were both members of the Institutional Revolutionary Party. They even had connections within the ranks of the police and military using corruption and intimidation to gain information and protection. Guerrero Unidos was also known for its involvement in political corruption, colluding with local authorities to serve their malicious interests. A tragic example was the disappearance of 43 students from Ayotzinapa College on September 26, 2014. These students were heading to support a protest in Mexico City to commemorate the 46th anniversary of the Tlatelolco massacre when the municipal police in Iguala stopped them and allegedly handed them over to members of Guerrero Unidos. At the request of the mayor, a coalition of forces from the Iguala Municipal Police, Federal Ministerial Police, Mexican Federal Police, Guerrero State Police, and various members of Sedina intercepted the student's bus and opened fire, resulting in the deaths of six students. According to a witness, some of the students were interrogated and tortured at a military base before being killed and incinerated by the cartel. This inhumane incident sparked protests and outrage both within Mexico and internationally, exposing the deep connection Connections between the criminal organization, the mayor of Iguala, Jose Luis Abarca, and other complicit officials. In southern Mexico, Guerrero Unidos is engaged in fierce conflicts with rival cartels, all vying for control over drug routes and territories, not only in Guerrero, but also in other states. The enemies they face include the Gulf Cartel, the Knights Templar Cartel, the Popular Revolutionary Army, the Sinaloa Cartel, Los Rojos, and La Nueva Familia Michoacana. One notable group resisting the expansion of the CJNG in Guerrero is Los Viagras. Originally from Mikoacan, Los Viagras started as a self-defense group fighting against the Knights Templar cartel. However, over time, they became involved in drug trafficking and other criminal activities. Los Viagras have joined forces with La Nueva Familia Mikoacana, another faction opposed to both the CJNG and Los Caballeros Templarios. Together, they form Carteles Unidos, a coalition determined to halt the CJNG's progress in Mikoacan and Guerrero. Carteles Unidos, also known as La Resistencia, was initially formed by the Sinaloa cartel 
the Gulf Cartel, La Familia Michoacana, and the Knights Templar Cartel in 2010. Their objective was to drive the Los Zetas Cartel out of Michoacan and Jalisco. However, as the Knights Templar Cartel collapsed and La Familia Michoacana splintered, Carteles Unidos shifted its focus towards countering the CJNG. An intense confrontation between these rival factions occurred in April 2020, when a convoy of CJNG gunmen attacked the community of La Huerta, the municipality of Aguilla, which was under the control of Los Viagras. In April 2020, CJNG gunmen stormed the town, firing at residents and members of Los Viagras, who had been in control since 2019. The encounter turned into a fierce and prolonged gun battle, lasting for hours and resulting in at least 18 deaths from the rival groups. The army personnel who traveled to La Huerta after the report of heavy shootings found an organized crime camp and in it 12 dead men who would be members of Los Viagras, Carteles Unidos. The victims were executed, apparently being caught while they slept, by the CJNG. At the bottom of a nearby ravine, six other bodies were found, which were sprayed with gasoline and set on fire. Due to the difficult terrain, until the afternoon, the rescue work of those bodies continued. In addition, 16 heavy caliber weapons were seized at the site, including a 50mm Barrett rifle, as well as magazines labeled with the legends FM from Familia Mikoacana, members of cartels, Unidos, and Viagras. Likewise, two trucks with artisan armor called Monsters were seized. According to inhabitants of the region, a couple of days ago, after holding shootings in El Aguaje and El Limoncito, Aguilila, members of Los Viagras, Carteles Unidos, displaced the Jalisco cartel. After taking control of those places, Los Viagras, Carteles Unidos, looted homes and businesses, and then went to La Huerta to rest, where they were ambushed. One of the main rivals of the Guerrero Unidos is the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, or CJNG, one of the most powerful and violent groups in Mexico. The CJNG is rapidly expanding its influence in Guerrero and other states, leading to intense clashes with Guerrero Unidos and other rival cartels as they compete for control of the lucrative heroin market. Credible sources report that the CJNG has been taking over opium poppy fields, heroin labs, and smuggling routes in Guerrero and beyond, which fuels deadly confrontations with Guerrero Unidos and other factions. This cartel is known for its dominance and brutality, with a strong presence in at least 28 out of the 32 states in Mexico. The violent conflicts between these two powerful cartels have had severe consequences for innocent people in Guerrero and neighboring states. The region located between Mexico City and the Pacific Coast has faced widespread insecurity, human rights violations, displacement, and deepening poverty. Sadly, Guerrero has a troubled history of enduring violence and misrule, and it now serves as the epicenter of organized crime in Mexico, with more competing groups vying for control than any other region. In response to the dangerous situation, many communities in Guerrero have formed self-defense forces or community police to protect themselves from the cartels. However, these groups encounter challenges like limited resources, a lack of legal recognition, inadequate training, coordination issues, and accountability concerns. Guerrero Unidos originated from former members of the Beltran Labor Organization affiliated with La Barbie, including Angel Casarubia Salgado, also known as El Mochomo, Cedronio Casarubia Salgado, also known as El Chino, and Mario Casarubia Salgado. The leader, Esther Yadira Huitron Vasquez, who was also known as La Jefa, took control after her husband's arrest in 2015 and was arrested in November 2021 in Huatepec, Morelos. She was one of Mexico's most wanted. Criminals, with a reward of 1.5 million pesos, or $75,000, offered for her capture. Interestingly, she is the sister-in-law of Angel Casarubias Salgado, El Motomo, one of the founders of Guerrero Unidos, currently in prison. Chapulin. Another theory that emerged from the video is that the father and son were referred to as chapulen, the Spanish word for grasshopper. Chapulen is also a Mexican slang word that has other meanings. It can describe people who quickly move from one place, job, or political party to another. It can also be used to label someone as unfaithful, disloyal, or opportunistic. The fact that the father and son were called chapulans points out that they were once associated with the Los Viagra cartel or betrayed them in some terrible way. In the Mexican cartel's world, betrayal or desertion is seen as a grave offense because it undermines their authority, loyalty, and reputation. These cartels follow strict codes of conduct, and those who break them face severe punishments. If you've ever watched a movie about Mexico's drug wars, you might have encountered a mix of glorified truth and exaggerated fiction, except for one grim reality, beheadings. These horrifying acts continue to be used as a cruel method for dealing with informants and traitors. Betrayal or desertion takes on various forms within the world of cartels, including actions such as changing loyalties, revealing sensitive information, stealing money, 
money or drugs, cooperating with authorities, disobeying orders, or leaving the cartel to join another group. Regardless of the situation, cartels relentlessly pursue and punish those who betray or desert them, often resorting to death or torture. Sometimes, these brutal consequences are extended to include the betrayer's families or friends. The cartels use horrifying methods to emphasize their strictness on loyalty to members of the cartel, rival cartels, and even the outside world. For example, in 2011, a disturbing video circulated widely on the internet. Another nephew and uncle were beheaded by an unidentified cartel while working as Halcones for the Sinaloa cartel. The Sicarios concealed their identities with masks and used a chainsaw and a knife to carry out their brutal acts. The video showed Felix Gamez Garcia on the left and his uncle Barnabas Gamez Castro on the right, both caught amid this tragic event. According to the video, Felix and Barnabas faced accusations of being informants for the infamous Sinaloa cartel and assisting in drug trafficking into the United States under orders from the notorious El Chapo. Following his arrest on drug charges, Felix was deported back to Mexico. However, instead of severing ties with the Sinaloa cartel, he became even more deeply involved. They identified themselves as cousins and admitted to having worked as Halcones or Hawks, meaning lookouts or spies for the cartel and drug smugglers. He started working for El Cholo, the leader of the Nueva Plaza cartel, and aligned himself with a faction of the Sinaloa cartel. But he must have known that betraying the cartel meant putting his life at risk. Barnabas Gamas Castro shared a heartbreaking detail, speaking about the meager wages the drug cartels paid them. These criminal organizations often exploited vulnerable individuals from impoverished backgrounds, forcing them into dangerous tasks that took a toll on their lives. Shockingly, Felix and Barnabas received a pitiful amount of only 300 pesos, which is about 21 USD, as payment for their last job that they carried out for the Sinaloa cartel. For nearly six terrifying minutes, they were interrogated by Sicarios, who is usually seen in gruesome videos of this kind, like the Guerrero flaying video. These men have no remorse or iota of respect for human life. We don't know what criminal organization they were part of, but they were ready to cause chaos and viciously shed blood. The victims endured brutal interrogation, beaten and hopeless, answering questions in resignation, seemingly accepting their fate. Some believe drugs in their system may have affected their demeanor during the ordeal. Before Barnabas was decapitated, he left a message for those who want to get into the dark side of the drug cartels. When the time of execution came, both men showed no signs of resistance. They appeared to have already resigned themselves to death. This was very similar to how the father and son in the Guerrero flaying murder resigned themselves to death without struggling. Even the sound of the chainsaw did not seem to affect them. The man in military attire, wielding the chainsaw, looked merciless. Barnabas Gamez Castro met a swift end to his life, as the Sicario tore his head apart from his body with a chainsaw. For anybody familiar with how brutal and merciless the cartel is, you can say that Barnabas Gamez Castro got lucky to have been spared from excruciating pain and torture before he died. His nephew, Felix Gamez Garcia, sat there unflinching, bathed in the blood gushing out of the severed neck of his uncle. Little did he know that what the Sicarios had in store for him was a fate worse than getting beheaded with a chainsaw. The Sicarios had a far more gruesome weapon in mind, a hunting knife. He experienced an even more horrifying fate due to his deeper involvement with drug dealers. A masked individual heartlessly sawed through his neck with a small hunting knife, causing unimaginable pain. Felix's feeble whimpers were drowned out by the ruthless Sicarios, and his agony ended when the Sicario severed his spinal cord with the hunting knife. The brutality didn't end there. They placed Felix's severed head on his torso as if they were displaying a trophy. Moving on, another person who betrayed the Mexican cartel and met a dreadful end was a respected and prominent gangster. At the peak of his life, he was known as El Cholo, the respected and presumed head of the Nueva Plaza Cartel, a criminal organization based in Guadalajara, Mexico. But at the end of his life, he was simply Carlos Enrique Sanchez, a body left on a park bench in downtown Tlacopac, the Mexican state of Jalisco, wrapped in a plastic tarp as another bloody casualty in the Mexican cartel wars. Now, if you are familiar with the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, also known as the CJNG, you know that they are not people that, in their right mind, would willingly cross paths with or betray. But El Cholo did the unthinkable. He didn't just betray some low-level members of the cartel, he turned his back on the boss himself, the infamous El Mencho. Instead of seeking approval, he started ordering hits without El Mencho's consent, which angered the boss. And this act of rebellion angered the cartel boss. A loyal member named Marcos Hernandez exposed El Cholo's secret actions to El Mencho, and this revelation further fueled the conflict. Instead of trying to make amends, El Cholo chose the path of confrontation. He left the CJNG and allegedly orchestrated the assassination of Marcos Hernandez, which led to a fierce war between his newly formed Nueva Plaza cartel and the CJNG. Despite being rivals, the Sinaloa cartel supported the Nueva Plaza cartel financially, adding fuel to the fire in the battle for control over Mexico's western states. Ultimately, El Cholo's alliance with the Sinaloa cartel proved to be his undoing. In a surprising turn of events, a video emerged on social media purportedly 
showing El Cholo making bold claims. Unfortunately, this video was one of his last acts before meeting his tragic end. His lifeless body was found on a park bench in downtown Tlacopac, Jalisco, wrapped in a plastic tarp, becoming another victim in the ongoing Mexican cartel wars. In a twist that shocked many, a video allegedly uploaded by the CJNG surfaced on social media, featuring El Cholo making bold claims. He confessed to being involved in burying bodies in mass graves and revealed the hidden crimes and corruption in the region by reporting these actions to the police. Tragically, on the same day the video was released, El Cholo was found dead on a park bench with two knives in his body, leaving the circumstances of his death mysterious and unanswered. Following the release of the disturbing video, Carlos El Cholo Sanchez Martinez's lifeless body was discovered near Tlacopac City Hall in Jalisco with a horrific inscription attached to his torso with two knives. The autopsy report that followed showed a horrifying account of torture inflicted on El Cholo while he was still alive, including broken toes, severed toes, fractured legs, indications of electric torture, gouged eyes, and the savage act of having his tongue pulled out. Knife wounds, fractured ribs, and three fatal bullet wounds to the head were thought to have been the cause of his death. Surprisingly, the Nueva Plaza Cartel and the Sinaloa Cartel did not retaliate against the CJNG after El Cholo's death. This unexpected calm in the city surprised the Mexican security analysts. However, beneath the surface of this apparent calm, there was a chilling message from El Mencho, the CJNG's leader. Leaving El Cholo's body in broad daylight was seen as a deliberate tactic to intimidate their enemies, warning CJNG members that any rebellion or defection would be met with a similarly brutal fate. Police officer there is a theory that the father in the video was a police officer and that he betrayed them by leaking information about Los Viagras. This theory is based on some clues in the video, such as the father's haircut, his clothing, and his demeanor. One of the biggest cartels in Mexico, which also has a presence in Micoacan, is the CJNG, led by Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes, who is popularly known as El Mencho. The CJNG is known for having the police on its payroll and for using them to protect its interests and attack its enemies. The CJNG often bribes, threatens or kills police officers who do not cooperate with them or who try to stop them. The police officers were supposed to turn a blind eye to the cartel's actions, offer intelligence, and even execute assassinations on their behalf. According to a former state government official, a captured member of the CJNG claimed that El Mencho has corrupted over half of Jalisco's municipal police force through bribery. The extent of the CJNG's infiltration varied depending on the roles of individual police officers. The cartel offered monthly payments ranging from 1,000 pesos to 50 50,000 pesos or even more, effectively turning the police into their silent allies. In some areas of Mexico, police officers earn as little as $500 a month, making them susceptible to being tempted by money. A phone call recording got leaked to Mexican media outlets in September 2016, where El Mencho exerted his power and dominance on the Mexican police to get them to act accordingly. Delta Uno. Hey, ¿quién habla? Mira bien, hijo de tu puta madre. Soy Mencho, güey. Relaja tu puta gente a la verga. Soy Mencho, güey. Relaja tus putas partidas, si no te voy a partir tu madre, tienes toda tu bola de perros. Te tengo identificado 30 güeyes. Hasta tus putos perros te voy a matar si no te relajas, güey. This video is perfect evidence of how the CJNG controls the police. This one, where El Mencho himself talks to a Delta One cop who had arrested some of his men. Vamos a ver. Ya está el señor, ahorita los bajo. Oh, no, 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 no cuelgues, hijo de la verga. Te no. tengo ubicado en los enchacalas, güey. No, no, le estoy colgando, le estoy diciendo ahorita los bajo. Póngase a las pilas, güey. ¿Qué es lo que hacer, amigo, cabrón? You can hear from the cop's voice that he is intimidated and scared out of his mind and reaffirms his allegiance to the CJNG. Señor, usted me conoce, usted sabe que yo soy capitán. Pues por eso me extraña, cabrón. Yo te entiendo, güey, pero por no mames, yo sé que tienes gente y la familia le chingaba. Verga, tú de las putas pilas. The video ended with the police officer referring to El Mencho as boss, showing how deep-rooted corruption and the Mexican drug cartels have eaten into Mexican law enforcement agencies. Ahora pues, ahí le encargo. Ándale, sí. Ahí, relájame los atores, dígale que va de parte mía. Claro que sí, señor. 
On the other hand, if the father in the Guerrero flaying video was indeed a cop who worked for El Mencho, then revenge would have been very swift and harsh on Los Viagras. The CJNG does not tolerate any betrayal or desertion from their associates, and they often punish them with death or torture, sometimes involving their families or friends, if they deem it fit. What they did to the members of the Los Viagras, who mocked and laughed at them, is a clear example of how they do not take anything lightly. In 2019, some Los Viagras members posted this video on social media where they openly laughed at El Mencho and the CJNG members, calling them losers and cowards. The CJNG did not take this insult lightly, and they responded by kidnapping the man who recorded the video. The CJNG, in turn, released a video of the Los Viagras member captured and bound in chains by his neck. In the video, two CJNG Sicarios, masked and wearing combat vests, stand menacingly with an array of weapons. One of them addresses the camera in a threatening manner. In the background, the victim's desperate cries and pleas for mercy are heartbreaking, as he knew he was about to face a grim fate. It becomes evident that his chances of survival are slim, and he may have been hoping for a quick end to his suffering, which sadly does not come. The Sicario takes out a large hunting knife and proceeds to cruelly sever the man's left leg at the knee, inflicting unimaginable pain. The victim's pleas for mercy are ignored as the Sicario continues with his merciless actions. The ordeal is just as heartbreaking as the Guerrero flaying with the father and son. All these men, pawns in a grand game that rich cartel leaders are playing to exert dominance over the others. It's a tale as old as time, isn't it? That when two elephants fight, the grass suffers. And that is it about the tragic fate of the father and son in Guerrero. If you want to see similar stories uncovering the cartels, click on one of the cards on the screen.